Yo guys, Punk on another video. This one's gonna cover the most important things to do once you reach endgame on your fresh level 60 vanilla character. Okay. Let's get it. So, you grinded all the way to level 60 in Classic. Congratulations. What a journey it was. You met friends, made enemies, yep. and conquered demanding challenges along the way. But in reality, your journey has just begun. The true challenge okay. now awaits you. In order to rise up to those challenges, however, you'll need to be prepared. Well, I thought this was about vanilla, not Burning Crusade. What's this? You are not prepared! The question is, how to prepare? Well, look no further. This guide is going to show you exactly what you oh, need to do in order from to effectively get Molten ready That's almost as old as Vanilla WoW. All right, so before we get into anything related to getting raid-ready gear, let's cover okay. some of the basics. If you intend on being in a not the God Emperor. Group, you're going to need to stand out from the other potential applicants applying to the same guild as you. The best way to do this is do all... Here's how to actually deal with applicants applying to the same guild as you. You want to make personal connections with people in the guild, and that way they just invite you anyway. Like, it's pretty simple. Like, the most important thing in a guild is making sure that you get along with everybody else. It actually has nothing really to do with, uh, you know, the social... Yeah, networking, exactly. Yeah, that's all you do. You just need to know the people in the guild, and they'll get you in. That's it. Nepotism. Yeah, nepotism, gaining advantages through other things. That's really what matters. Like, having a 40-man raid, you can have 10 of those people AFK and it doesn't fucking matter. Right? So as long as they enjoy being around you, they'll invite you. Little things. And most of this comes from professions. Firstly, you're going to want to get gathering profession, or at least a gathering profession. I don't know about Herbalism that. Herbalism would probably be the most straightforward one because you can just earn and that'll three? give you all the materials that you need for Holy raging tools going forward. However, mining is pretty good, especially in the early days, because of how much money it generates from thorium being quite expensive mm -hmm. in the early days. But if you're okay. looking to be self-sufficient in your raid preparation, I wouldn't suggest mining over herbalism. With that said, you can still go mining and use the money that you generate to purchase your consumables or purchase the herbs to get your consumables crafted by a guildmate. Alongside your gathering profession, you're going to want to have a crafting profession, something like blacksmithing, leatherworking, enchanting, or alchemy. Okay. I'm purposely omitting tailoring because I don't think tailoring in the very early version of the game, which is what we're going to be getting with WoW Classic, gives you that many useful patterns to create. Wait, what is ERBS? Why are you guys saying ERBS? What's an herb? He's talking about herbs. It's a herb. The most useful uh, raid prep pattern is probably Bloodvine set, and okay. that only comes uh, or becomes available during the Zolga Rub release. All right, so first we got blacksmithing. It's super useful on a it's warrior the best and one. in a lot of ways necessary sometimes. Uh, so you might want to actually take mining and go blacksmithing on warrior, especially if you're going to be a tank. I don't know Multi about that. Core, you're going to need a full set of fire resistance gear. And in order to craft this, you're going to need to mine and smelt dark iron ore, which is obtainable at BRD and other spots. This like is Multi all I would do. Well. And this was my job. Also gain reputation with Thorian Brotherhood in order right. to unlock the recipes for Dark Iron Plate Gear, which is the fire resistance set. Yep. Leatherworking, on the other hand, is extremely useful for rogues, hunters, and I don't and know about leatherworking. Directly at the launch of Vanilla, there's going to be a set called the Devil Source set, which is a two piece set with a nice set bonus. Whoa. And this is absolute pre made Wait, VIS. What it's the fuck? That's actually really good. You're going to be getting even tier two level. Oh my god. So you can craft That's this insane. With Devil Sore Leather, which drops off the elite dinosaurs. Holy and shit. Crater. And uh, generally, the dinosaurs in Ungoro are extremely hard to come by, mainly because wow. there's something referred to as the Devil Sword Mafia. So the Devil Sword Mafia refers to competing Horden Alliance members that group up together and battle to the death in Ungoro to gain access to these dinosaurs at their specific spawn locations right. in order to secure the leather. Participating in this stuff can actually be quite fun. I mean, it doesn't really feel like regular mindless farming. It feels more like a battleground. With the announcement of layering being implemented for the first month or so, you could potentially take advantage of a great opportunity here. If you hit high levels quite fast, you can form a group of guildies or friends, like-minded individuals, whatever, force yourself onto a lesser populated layer on your server, and absolutely dominate the Devil Source stock on your server. This Dude, we're gonna fucking do that. We can just abuse the layering system because it's entirely, it, it's based uh, around, uh, what do you call it? Uh, around the entire continent. So we can just layer farm all of the Devil Star and get these sets for everybody in the first week. 
Well, no, it's not TOS. How's that TOS? It's in the game. It's not TOS at all. Trust me, like that. People do that in retail. Like you, you check for mobs on one server, then you have your friend invite you to another server, and then you swap and you look on that server too. People do this all the time. You're busy getting camped. People won't be that high enough level, man. And we'll do it with a group. Like it's not going to be a big deal. This is a great fucking idea. Clever use of game mechanics. Clever abuse of game mechanics. That's what it's really about. Uh, need horde friends to kill lions to go for it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, we'll figure that out. It'll be okay. And uh, also, they won't be able to swap layers as fast as we can because they won't have people inviting them. So we'll be much more efficient than they are. Something, something spirit of vanilla? Listen, bro. If I have to deal with dozens of people messaging me, sending me mail, calling me a cocksucker, trying to jump around in front of me with level once... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these advantages whenever I can get them, okay? I said I would not accept gold. This is a bit of a, uh, of a gray area here. We'll probably just put, put the money towards the guild bank, which is actually going to be me. I'm going to be the guild bank, but I'll have a specific character, and I'll, I'll call him... Uh, what would be a good, a good way to... What would be a good name for a guild, char a guild bank character name? Yoink, Yoinkerino. Yeah, that's actually a really good... <laughs> that's a great... <laughs> that's a great guild bank. Yeah, Asmon Bank. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll call it um, uh, Bank of Azeroth. Uh, Asmon Silver. That's a good idea, too. Always but. sells a caught case, considering how good the Devil Source set actually is. That's As for I didn't even realize it was that good. Engineering is an all-around PvE, PvP utility profession. It's so the best if you profession look at my video game. where I did some commentary Period. over a BWL speedrun, You'll notice that engineering has a bunch of little unique Average vanilla gadgets player right there. that are extremely useful in speedrunning scenarios. So if you're well, looking for a strong had. guild that has plans for speedrunning in the future, having maxed out engineering gives a great incentive for them to invite you and shows that you're dedicated to pushing for fast clears. Fuck yeah. A lot of the times you can get away with going engineering and using other means to make gold in order to buy your devil source set or your dark iron plate set or whatever. So at the end of the day, you can do whatever you want as long as you're generating gold. Enchanting is pretty self-explanatory. Most vanilla guilds that I've applied to over the years have always put so much emphasis on enchanted gear. And when I'm leading a raid guild, it's always one of the first things that I look for when looking for potential applicants. Most hardcore guilds want to see almost all of your items or preferably all of your items fully enchanted in order to give you a raid spot. This is a more difficult thing in the early I remember there was this, uh, this is back in the day, we had like people in the guild and they'd be like, oh, I don't want to get enchants on my gear because if I join your guild, I'm going to get better gear and I can put enchants on that instead. Like that was the best, I, I used to love that rationalization for people not enchanting their gear. Uh, the reason I didn't enchant my gear usually is because I didn't, I was cheap, I didn't want to pay for it. But uh, yeah, that was basically the logic that they would use back in the day. Yeah, Black Mage Weave, hey. Early, early days of a vanilla launch there's more leniency on it because not many yep. people have maxed out enchanting and a lot of people are missing certain recipes uh because you need to grind rep or have them drop in a raid but if you have the ability to enchant most of your items with even like a tier two enchant it'll go an extremely long way in terms of securing yourself a raid spot enchanting can also be extremely lucrative there's many rare recipes and grinded recipes like crusader which is a world drop 15 we agility to, to one too, hander by the way. and 25 agility to yo we should farm hander, that which today timber mall rep and raid drop enchant, holy shit that's a good idea get you rolling in the right direction for gold if you're able to attain them it's not dropping and like also AQ. it'll allow you to be self-sustaining when it comes to enchanting your own gear right at the end of the day though keep in mind that leveling up enchanting is probably the hardest out of all of the uh, crafting professions to actually level up so it takes a whole lot of dedication so if you don't end up choosing enchanting make sure you're farming a good amount of gold in order to keep your gear enchanted uh... and make sure you're also collecting all the levels 50 plus green items and blue items the boe ones of course so you can send them to a guildmate or a friend who's an enchanter and have them disenchant him is that true and, uh, give you the mats alchemy is straightforward i won't get into all the small potion recipes but what okay. i want to put emphasis on are flasks flask and vanilla are not trained by the alchemy tra increases players maximum health by 1200 holy fuck and it's a two hour flask what the fuck these flasks are ridiculous Holy shit, these are really, really good. Wow, Crusader is Hearth Glen, right? Yeah, so we'll have to go over, we can go over to Western Plaguelands, and oh, we can kill Nathanos too. 
but we need a lot of people. We need to bring a lot of people if we're going to do this. Servers aren't even up yet, though. They're rare recipes that drop at a low percentage by certain bosses in late game dungeons. Flask of the Titans drops off General Dracosath in Shit. UBRS. Flask of Supreme Power drops off uh, Ras Frost Whisper in Skolomats. And um, Flask Holy of Distilled shit. Wisdom drops off Balnazar, the final boss in Strathholm live side. Yeah. The drop rate is around 3 to 4% per flask, so you're going to be um, consistently farming these dungeons, like non stop, that, hopefully, with your guildmates to get access Holy to the recipes shit. early. 100% the biggest priority as an alchemist at level 60. Also, keep in mind that in order to make a flask in vanilla, you need to be stationed at an alchemy lab. There's two locations for this in the game. An One's in Blackwing Lair, where the goblins are at, and another an one's in Skolomats, where Ras Frost Whisper is. Uh, it's almost like this used to be an power. MMO. Oh, and level up first aid and possibly cooking, because first aid is always used in raids on mechanics where healers need to save mana, or there's downtime and you could just heal yourself. There's no reason for a healer to have to waste his mana on you. No. And, um... Obviously, food buffs. It costs me money. I'm These not going to do that. These are things that accumulate, and you can mention no. within your application to a guild, which will help you get invited. All yeah. right, so let's get off the profession train for a little bit here. I mean, okay. to be honest, professions aren't the most. So you exciting love off topic. your professions. I know we what you're it. thinking. Dungeons. Let's talk dungeons. Okay. Here so we, we go. got Blackrock Depths, UBRS, yep. LBRS, yep. Strathholm, Skolomance, Maradon. Okay, okay, I get Whoa. it. But slow down. Slow down just a second. Settle down. Before we talk about dungeons, let's talk about pre-raid BIS. Pre-raid BIS is pretty self-explanatory. It's the best in slot gear that you can get before stepping foot into a raid. Okay. Getting a pre-raid BIS set that's fully enchanted is, along with everything else that I mentioned, the most surefire way to guarantee yourself a raid spot in at least a guild. I mentioned this in the first video that I ever made for YouTube, but if you Google Nostalarius pre-raid BIS set, You'll see this Google Sheet spreadsheet on the Reddit post right over here that covers all of this the top really items good. per item Holy slot shit. for each class. A good amount wow. of these items probably won't actually be available during the first itemization patch Damn. since Blizzard announced that they'll be doing progressive itemization um, slowly throughout the content patches. Everything's wrong. But even if that's Who the case, cares? this list not only has the top item per slot, but a bunch of others ranked under it. So God just go damn. one, two, or three items lower in the list and find the next best alternative. Yeah, this is Doing really this good. this will be super important so you can prioritize which dungeons to focus on in order to fill up your gear slots effectively okay. rather than just blindly doing any dungeon. Now, okay. based on the title of the video and my introductory sentence, you probably feel like you're going to need to hit level 60 in order to even get started. Nope. The first point that I want to make here That's actually is That's the best part about it. End game doesn't necessarily start at level 60. Once you reach level 55 plus and sometimes even a bit lower, that's whenever you cases, start working on. You aren't strictly pre regimented to purely leveling to level 60 before yep. you can start your journey to becoming raid ready. If we look at the pre-raid BIS set, let's say for it's the, one the best parts about example, vanilla, you'll see that a very you start prepping ring, for in game uh, before you even max level. Named the Blackstone Ring. I love ring. it. The Blackstone Ring drops off Princess in Maradon. Maradon can be cleared at level 49 theoretically, so you can level dedicate 40, some actually. of your gameplay time outside of leveling to the pre-BIS grind, anywhere from level 50 to 60. This becomes especially true past level 55 because then you unlock most of the dungeons in Endgame. For example, you can start grinding BRD for whatever item you want. Yeah, you can do that list, whenever. Um, so Let me ask, did Stay Safe, did they finish Maradon or were they not able to? Because I, I saw that they were trying that this morning. No? Oh, they got cucked by the server restart? Weren't they, like, almost at the end of it, though? Oh, man. I got fucked that hard by first giant. Just kite him, dude. Holy shit, Just man. That foe, sucks. Hand of Justice, which are BIS mm, melee that items. That sucks. And we'll I need to get that Hand of Justice. Hand of Justice Starting is that ridiculous. Early will help you get the head start. Or even yep. hitting level 60 and already having those is... is insanely valuable i'm probably going to make a video where i go into I a lot of these items more uh, into I'll like a deep dive style so i won't go to, into too much detail about them um, okay. but yeah anyways we'll keep that for another one alongside the dungeon grind you're also going to want to focus on specific dungeon quests there aren't that many of them i think uh, some of them may not even come with the first patch that we get um specifically like um the quest line that leads to the quest in dreams um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't in know what, what Blizzard's stance on this, but That's technically, the one... this this oh, uh, yeah. quest line was added in patch 1.7. That's where Tyrion's so sure son dies. Available during the Molten Core uh, content. Well, that's really phase. fucking good. But if it is available, it God gives damn. a really nice tank chess piece and a melee DPS necklace. I think it's called Mark of Forging. So again, yeah, if crazy. you can do it, then it's an absolute must. 
But Holy aside shit. from that, there's also a couple other yeah, spoilers, quests by the way. that give some really nice items, so let's go over some of those. So alongside that, you're also going to want to do your Onyxia and Molten Core Tumen quests while um, in the high level 50 range. And those quests are going to take you both right. through Blackrock Depths. Attunement to the Core, which is the quest for Molten Core, um, asks Isota, you to clear the all the way What's to up, the dude? Molten Core portal within BRD. You can also do this cheesy route through the uh, magma to just get there without having to clear the whole instance. You collect the stone and then take it back and you're attuned. So the Onyxia Attunement quest is different for Horde and Alliance. I'm not going to go into too much detail and like start getting into yeah, this what fucking it is on annoying, both sides. Dude. I'll just tell you really quick that the Alliance like, one is in BRD. You... Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get uh, a kill on an Ixie or any of these bosses in week one in Classic. Like, there's, like, no way of it happening. I mean, I could see, like, a super, super, super no-life guild being able to do it. But in terms of, like, just an average guild or whatever the fuck, like, there's no fucking way it's going to happen. Like, I, I, I can't see it happen. An Ixie attunement takes forever. Well, the issue is, like, even if I can do it, then let's say how many other people are going to be able to do it. I, I, that's the main issue. Stay safe, Will? Yeah, maybe stay safe will do it, but will everybody else in his guild do it? I mean, that's a really, really hard, like, a high-level thing to expect. I, I don't see any of these, like, you know, guilds, because, like, how, like, how can you really tell if your guild is going to be super motivated whenever Classic actually comes out? You know, there's everybody, like, this is, like, whenever expansions come out, right? Expansion comes out, and right before the expansion, your raiding roster is 50 people, right? You can make two raids, and then by the time that Mythic comes out, your raiding roster is 18 people, because they all just dropped out, changed their mind, or decided not to play, and then three or four of them that actually leveled up turned out to actually be fucking garbage, and we couldn't trust them to be in the raids. I get the, the issue with this kind of shit is, like, yeah, if you have, like, a guild from, like, private servers or whatever, maybe... Maybe you'll be able to do it but anytime there's a server like this or anytime there's a transition period you always lose people in translation ever happens every fucking expansion so i don't know if any guild is going to kill anexia or uh, ragnaros on week one if they do that'll be extremely impressive but my guild will kill it on second week so i'm not too worried about it help marshall windsor escape from prison and you also have to do a bunch of pre-quests and later quests after that and uh, an interesting thing actually is that there's a pre-bis belt for fury warriors that you get along that uh, onyxia chain quest oh. so that's super useful um, as well and it kind of ties good. in you're getting attunements you're getting a uh, pre bis oh, wow. item yeah that is really good damn while, uh, doing it so okay that's a good knock, belt uh, three birds with one stone right the most important quest out of the onyxia's lair attunement quest line is for the horde on the horde side okay. which asks you to go slay war chief rend and uh, there's general dracosath's demise on alliance side which asks you to go kill um, General Dracosath. Both of them are in UBRS. Okay. This quest gives you a choice of three trinkets. So we have Black Hand's Breath, Eye of the Beast, and Mark of Tyranny. I used to These have the Black Hand's Breath. absolutely viable all amazing. the way until Nax. And I mean, should be yeah, probably they were one broken, of your first man. priorities, the crit one and the- I uh, love that trinket. Uh, melee crit and the spell crit specifically. Always I mean, obviously critical if you strikes. Get Drake, Drake Fang Talisman, Every time. it's better, but this specific trinket, you're gonna see almost everyone has this till yeah, now. So big, big prio to do that quest line pretty much immediately as fast as you can. Really quick, um, an item that most of mages and warlocks will be gunning for during pre-raid BIS grind is Briarwood Reed. This is a trinket with 29 spell power that drops from Jed and UBRS. This boss in UBRS is actually a rare spawn, so you're gonna have to do it a bunch of times, a bunch of UBRS runs to actually get it. Especially oh considering that you're probably gonna oh be boy. in the 10-man the dungeon, because UBRS is a 10-man dungeon with a That's bunch so of different bad. casters or a couple different casters, and it might take you upwards of potentially 30 runs that to sucks. get this item, to be completely honest. And um, it's one of the reasons why I'm staying away from mages specifically this time around in vanilla is just the loot grind is so real and the competition for loot makes it even worse. But I digress. Master I mean, the point is, Problem this item solved. will last you till late BWL yeah, just until wood. Theryon's tier pretty much. And um, it's one of the items that you should focus on. No, tier was so fucking OP. We had mages in my guild kill Illidan with it. It's on right away if you're try hard. But in general, take a look at the list. Go through it as effectively as possible, picking out items you want to build around, get a, get a set, and then focus on these sort of items and like hard farming them to finish off your set. And, and also the boss, um, before this, there's the fire boss, I forget his name, I'll, I'll post it here. In um See, the best part about this boss, the hardest part about this boss right here, is waiting for the RP to end. Like, there was one time in my guild, I think this happened, um, the RP was taking so long, somebody hearthed out because they thought it was bugged and the boss spawned. 
UBRS drops two strike shoulders for melee, and these shoulders are incredibly good. Like, that these is, will, again, last Yeah, those so are really good, too. Point. One thing you're going to want to do as a melee once near level 60 is get this dropped quest item in Winter Spring, which allows you to start picking up this consumable that drops straight off the furbogs there. It's called Winterfall Firewater, which gives you 35 oh, yeah. attack power for 20 minutes and makes you grow in size. So My mom cool. used to farm these for me. There's also juju power buffs that you can get yeah. from the Winterfall Echo Quest. But that isn't available until oh, patch Oh, jeez. That was so annoying. So that's going to be available in the first phase of Wild Yeah, my mom would actually farm this one. In general, She'd mail there's melee consumables available in Winter Spring. So just be aware, yep. be aware of that going forward. All right, so let's summarize everything really quick. Okay. First part I covered was professions. Good. Becoming self-sufficient with your consumables and generating enough oh. income to get all your stuff enchanted. Purchase all what of the extra income to What was that picture, dude? What was that fucking... Look at that gear. Was professions. I, I want to look at it right there. Becoming with your... 10,000 gold... There's no way this is an actual player, man. This has got to be some sort of a fucking... Like, this has got... Dude, like, what the fuck, man? Like, uh, stacks of flasks, dark rune, water. He's got his mounts right there. Holy shit, 10,000 gold? How the fuck do you have 10,000 gold? That's insane. Consumables and generating enough income to get all your stuff enchanted, purchase all of the extra consumables that you're not able to craft by yourself. Right. Um, purchase crafted or BOE pre-raid items and a little addition to that is generating enough income to eventually purchase your 100% uh, movement speed ground mount or epic mount. Secondly, focusing on your pre-raid BIS items and doing all the requisite dungeons right. which as stated can theoretically start before level 60 if you see groups going to a dungeon that you may need and might want to tag along with. isn't insane. Um, in relation to me. that, doing all the associated quests alongside those dungeons which yield pre-raid BIS items and in conjunction doing your attunement quests so you're raid this ready is actually really smart. Being level 60 with a full pre-raid BIS set, fully enchanted, two max out professions, a steady supply of consumables including first aid and food buffs, of course. is the magic recipe to successfully getting into a guild. Of course. You can have 10 gladiator titles, have the best reaction time, you're literally faker, you know, the most nimble little fingers on earth, but that means nothing. Didn't they shut arena junkies down? Like, I'm pretty sure they did, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that goes to show how many people are actually invested in Arena Junkies. Yeah, it's down. I know, Nick, I know you're very upset about that because you used to troll people and talk shit on the website. I remember it very clearly. Um, but uh, unfortunately, they did have to get rid of it. Yeah, ThoughtBot, yeah, they got rid of that too. To most PvE raid leaders in comparison to showing dedication on maxing out remember your that? gear yeah, I and statting through enchants I and consumables, blah, blah, blah. You the, the, I can buy your whole People family. want to raid with that? someone who shows effort, trust me. And if you follow this model that I've laid out for you, it, it will be clearly apparent that you know what you're doing and that you're putting in that extra effort to get raid ready, which is exactly what guild recruitment officers are looking for. I probably right. could have gone into more detail on specific items and whatnot, maybe covered some more things, but I want to keep it relatively short and I don't want to underestimate your ability to sort of sort out um, what I'm telling you and do the research Should have and figure underestimated out where things stand. Because I don't know what to enough. do. And I think, you know, if you take a look at all the resources that I've given you, you'll understand the pattern of itemization and why certain things are more sought after than others. Now, with that said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. That stuff goes a really long way with the algorithm. It helps my channel grow. So if you guys want to support my content and you want more content like this, that's pretty much the best way to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, as always, I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one. Peace. Anna winner, pay the front line, take the don'ts. He's coming out again for a new point. Get your bets down, ladies What the and fuck is this? Four fours to point, mark four. Ace, two, scrap, mark four. Oh my Ace, god. Two, scrap, four. Okay, so this is... Welcome to private server YouTube, boys. Here it is. Absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, we are also still... Servers are still down, unfortunately. So we'll see what's gonna happen. Um... Uh, I, I don't know, man. Visualize autism? Yeah, it is still down. We're trying to sort this out, but we'll see what's going to happen, okay? Uh, Jet Set Radio Future Music? I never really listen to any of that shit, man. Uh, we can watch when we come back online. I have no fucking idea, dude. Like, I, I, I'm not sure when they're going to come back on. Um, this is kind of fucking annoying, actually. Um, come on. See, like... If it makes you feel any better, Soto, like, what happened is Stay Safe has been in Maradon for, like, 
like what is it like six hours or something like that and they finally get up to like where princess is surface down crash I'm done all that for fucking nothing all of that shit all for fucking nothing dude I, 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 it sucks. Like, if I was him, I'd be fucking pissed, dude. I'd be so mad. But, like, it's one of those things that you're gonna think is funny in, like, a month, but you're really mad about right now. That's wrong. Someone ran the wrong way and they pulled a pack and wiped them. I don't know. I, I just, that's what people told me.